treat our a, a innovative ingredient supplier uh, to the beverage industry, but also to some other industries as well, such as the flavor, fragrance industry, and also the food industry. And we've got a broad portfolio of very exciting products that we, which we supply into those markets. The major market that we serve is the beverage industry. Now, 40% um, uh, of all flavours produced in the world go into beverage. It's a hugely innovative space. And if you consider uh, the supermarket beverage aisle today, be it in the UK or in any part of the developed world today compared with 10 years ago, it's materially different. There's a lot more choice for the consumer. And that choice has brought a lot of opportunity for treat uh, in the last seven or eight years. And we very much drive hard at the beverage space. It's not the only uh, segment uh, we, we deal with. We, we, we very much um, uh, enjoy our traditional routes to market through uh, the flavour fragrance houses. And we've We've certainly got some excellent relationships there. And we've really got these sort of two channels to market, direct to the FMCG, which mostly is beverage, but also through, through the flavor houses as well. So our portfolio is um, quite diverse, but citrus ingredients are broadly 50% of our portfolio. We also have a growing portfolio of health and wellness products and fruit and vegetable products, and also tea. And together, those, those uh, four categories are about 70% of our business today. So the remaining 30% of our portfolio is herb spice and florals, and also some synthetic uh, uh, chemicals as well, which we supply somewhat into the food industry, uh, but that's an important part of our portfolio. So it's a very diverse portfolio, but one that's very well positioned, we feel, we feel with the marketplace today. So one of the most exciting uh, new arenas we're getting into at Treat is coffee. Now we've been in the tea space for some time, and for us tea is largely the iced tea market, principally uh, in North America, but also increasingly across the rest of the world. And I think as consumers sort of transition from uh, carbonated soft drinks into more um, beverages which at least have the health connotation, uh, a health benefit connotation, uh, coffee interests us uh, very much. We're able to utilize our extraction technology in the coffee space. We're very good and experienced in extraction technology. Coffee's technically very complex. There's a very good reason why baristas freshly grind coffee beans when you go into a very good quality uh, coffee shop. So it took us um, some time and certainly a lot of R&D effort to find the optimum solution that we can bring to market now, but we're very confident in this space and certainly it gives us great opportunity to leverage our relationships with our tea customers into the important cold brew uh, coffee space. We also think there's, um, and indeed our customers tell us, there's some rather poor quality uh, products on the market today and we certainly think we can bring some sort of premiumization and quality uh, to that space which, um, which we're excited about for the future. We're certainly doing a lot of work in the area of uh, sugar reduction and health and wellness. That's a very important category for treat, and it has been now for a number of years, but we're driving hard at that space. And again, it almost fits that ESG kind of strategy in some ways that you know consumers want to um, consume a more healthier range of products. Uh, sugar tax has certainly driven a lot of innovation in that space, but generally, I think there's a growing consumer awareness around the calorific content of the food and drink that they're consuming and, and a desire to remove the calories, but also importantly maintaining that very important sensation that there may be uh, sugar in, in the beverage, which and we can, our technology enables us to bring that science uh, to the benefit of our customers. Another exciting area of innovation for tree is the fruit and vegetable category, which has seen uh, at least 25% growth year on year and every year in the last five years. And we certainly see further opportunities in that space. So for example, we process truckloads of uh, watermelon and cucumber and other fruits and vegetables, which enable our beverage customers to innovate and provide that really authentic top note, that authentic flavor, which in turn helps our customers differentiate themselves in the marketplace. ESG has always been really part of Treat's DNA, and I think at Treat, what we like to say is that we were into ESG before it became an acronym in the investment community. You know, it, it very much runs a common thread through everything we do. We absolutely, and have done for many years, believe doing the right things by our customers, our suppliers, our communities, where we're very much actively involved today. And most of our portfolio is natural. Um, you know, very small part of our business uh, is synthetic. So we all we have a very much a natural slant to the business. We're very low waste, um, and importantly, we're driving at further innovation in this space. So 
Tree is very much about ESG and we consider ourselves very much an ESG investable proposition, but not because we've just got to it. It's always been there and we're sort of bringing it further through to the surface because we feel it's the right way to run the business. The background to this is that uh, when we remodeled the business in 2012, we had revenue of 74 million. That's now grown to 113 million. And in that time, profits have grown 150 percent. And we've done this despite operating out of six suboptimal buildings in the 1970s industrial estate. And in the US, uh, the great news is that the business has grown so much that we've simply outgrown the capacity and relatively small footprint that we have there. So the good news is we completed our $15 million US expansion last year on time and on budget. And that will double the capacity in our fruit and vegetables health and wellness, and tea flavour business. And we've built the infrastructure to be able to treble from the previous capacity for roughly another $4 million. In the UK, we have been looking to relocate from our existing site for a number of years now. And the great news is that despite a slight delay in construction, we expect to be ready to move to our new site at the end of this year. That's a £40 million investment, of which £17 million related to uh, enhanced plant and machinery. Anything from automated warehouses, computer controlled stills, clean in place. And we expect that that will deliver significant ability for the business to grow over the next 10 years, as well as improving our margins. As Damon's mentioned, we're looking to expand into coffee and that will require some capex over the, over the coming years, as we see that as very much an opportunity for material growth in the business over the next few years. In terms of um, uh, routes for growth, we've obviously grown organically very successfully and we consider that there, with, with the investment that we've made, our priority is to leverage that to continue our organic growth. Of course, if an opportunity for accelerating that growth comes through acquisition, the board will look at it. But our priority today is to deliver the UK relocation successfully, make sure that bed's in and deliver the organic growth that we see uh, from the market opportunities before us. Oh, I would say un undoubtedly our culture in the business. You know, the effort we get from our engaged teams every day in the business continues to impress us. And absolutely, it's been really the fuel in the, in the engine, which has, you know, delivered such a strong set of results over the last seven or eight years. You know, our, our teams are fantastically uh, engaged, fantastically intelligent, driven hard at succeeding in the business. And of course, many of them are also shareholders in the business, which helps that overall uh, alignment piece. But certainly, you know, Richard and I would uh, would say absolutely every time the thing we're most proud of is the culture in the business. It's, uh, it's really a great place to work, Treat, but I guess I would say that as CEO. But if I wanted a career today, I'd want to work for Treat. When I became CEO in 2012, our objective was to grow our business in a sustainable way. And I'm pleased to say that we've done that. You know, we've more than doubled our, our PBT in the last seven years. And you know, we're certainly as excited about the future today as we were back then in 2012. There's a lot of opportunity in front of us and we're hungrily driving at those opportunities.